I guess because of our beloved but failed cooking show pilot, I get a lot of questions about canine nutrition. People wanting to know what to feed their dog, how much to feed their dog, and why they should feed one particular diet over another. As always, I think it's important I stress I am not a doctor of any sort. I just pretend to be one with my dogs on the internet. That said, my hope today is to give a layman's overview to help you find the best food for your pup. Between all the conflicting diets and fads and data, it can be really confusing trying to pick and stick to just one. We want the best for our dogs, so we simply want an answer to what the best food is. But first, think about human nutrition. From vegans to meat eaters to vegetarians to pescatarians to librarians, I'm not sure about that last one, but science has studied them all with billions of dollars worth of research. And what they've discovered is, they're not really sure. Recommendations change, portions change, and guidelines evolve. There's no one size fits all diet for humans, so we each have to figure out which foods work best for us. The same exact thing is true for our dogs, except the way less research has been done. On top of that, we can't let them figure it out for themselves. Otherwise, Penny would just strictly eat bacon. So that means it's our job to help them. Currently, raw diets are gaining in popularity, but the focus of this video is kibble-based options. Like every other diet, raw has its pros and cons, but it unequivocally requires a lot more research, oversight, and coordination with the vet. Either way, the first diet everyone should feed their dog is whatever they were eating the day you brought them home. Transitioning to a new home is a lot for a puppy, so you don't want to overwhelm them by also suddenly changing their diet. Sticking to a familiar feeding routine will help keep your pup feeling comfortable and at ease. Also, early on, get in the habit of measuring food exactly. No more eyeballing. The more consistent, the more easier it will be to track your dog's growth and health. It's a personal preference, but I also recommend these slow bowls. They're an easy way to slow down speed eaters and can help reduce the risk of bloat. A lot of questions I get are from people concerned about the growth of their puppy. They are worried about the feeding recommendations on the bag and think it's either too much or not enough. It's important to remember those numbers on the bag are the loosest guidelines possible. The feeding amount should be dialed in by you and your vet according to your puppy's individual needs. And how much food your puppy needs depends on age, activity level, season, how often Penny beats you up, and a whole lot of other changing factors. As your pup grows, their nutritional requirements will fluctuate. Adjust food as needed to keep their energy levels healthy while being careful not to overfeed. Consistently loose stool is an indicator you're likely feeding too much. And especially with large breed pups, it's beneficial for their bone and joint health that they aren't overweight in developmental stages. So, what does overweight look like? Allow me to save you the back pain and assure you that it doesn't look like a number on a scale. Every dog is different, so relying on an abstract number isn't a helpful way to gauge a healthy weight. The best way is to start with visual cues. After a toe injury, Echo gained too much weight because yours truly overfed him during recovery. It's not the best photo, but here you can see there's a noticeable layer of fat over his ribs and chest, versus these later photos where his back ribs are visible and there's a noticeable hip tuck. These indicators are good for dogs of all shapes and sizes. Zero is about twice as big as Penny by every metric. But as you can see here, he still has a defined waist and a thin layer of fat over his ribs. Penny, although standing a bit wonky in this clip, also has a similar tuck at her hip. It'll look different on different dogs, but the principle is generally applicable across the board. Of course, no matter how much you feed a Ridgeback, they'll act like they never had a square meal in their life. In fact, Many scientists speculate at the center of every Ridgeback stomach is a black hole. So what's really important is you have the discipline to feed a consistent diet and the flexibility to adjust it as needed to best suit your dog's individual health. Now, after all that long-winded talking, you might just want me to tell you what brand to buy. 
Unfortunately, there is no single right answer. No one best diet or food. But the good news is there has never been more high quality options to choose from. I won't recommend one brand over another just because there are no guarantees about which of them best suits your dog. And that's all that matters to you. I do recommend buying small bags of food and transitioning slowly until you find what works best. Don't let price or packaging guide you here. Go by the health and fitness of your dog alone. And it's not a one-time answer. Feeding your dog is a lifelong process of adjustment. And all dogs are different, so don't get discouraged by setbacks or if a diet that works for other dogs isn't really suited for yours. My hope is that this video is not an end, but a beginning. One which helps frame a complicated subject with some manageable expectations to help you help your dog live a full and healthy life. Oh yeah. Also, don't forget to cut back on dog treats once you add a kid.